there. All right, guys, uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. There's 34 people on and uh, we're three minutes after. So just to be mindful of everybody's time who was uh, early and on time today, we're going to go ahead and get started. So just as a reminder for the uh, agenda items today, um, we have some minimal updates on the classification study stuff that's been going on. Um, upcoming contract negotiations we wanted to discuss briefly as well as some short staffing issues that's been going on at BMC and the pediatric unit and the PICU. Uh, in addition to that, um, our continued efforts for the workplace violence prevention campaign that we've been doing for the last uh, several months since the summertime, okay? So um, after that, we'll open it up to questions, concerns, comments, or anything else that you guys may have. Um, and so we'll go ahead and get started. So in terms of the classification study, um, not many things have changed since the last email we sent out, um, which basically stated that we had a meeting with Jeff Smith, the county executive. And at that point in time, we were able to um, individually go over each classification and discuss um, our concerns, what's been received so far or what has been achieved so far for those classifications and where um, our goals stood for the additional classification. So during that time, um, we felt like we made really great progress. And a lot of that is due to the efforts of the membership who attended the Board of Supervisors meetings, who sent letters, um, in addition to us speaking with all the Board of Supervisors, meeting with their staff members to express to them the concerns that we have and the concerns that we receive from our membership. So um, a big thanks to the membership for doing your part and participating and calling, you know, coming when we call you. Um, that ensured that we were able to at least uh, make some progress and get these meetings scheduled so that we can um, get more get more movement on these items, right? So during that time, we were able to get 10% for the A&Ms, um, which is a huge win for them. And we're extremely proud that we were able to uh, get that for them that day. At that time, we also agreed to discuss uh, with Jeff Smith, the per diem issue, the fact that the clinical per diem nurses have not uh, received any increase. We, we discussed their salary grid at the time and we sent them additional information from neighboring hospitals. We've done our part in creating tables and graphs and different things that we've provided to them so we can help them help us, uh, for lack of a better phrase, to basically understand where our concerns are coming from. So in addition to that, we also received um, information on the nurse practitioner salary review, as well as the CRNA salary review and class study with job spec revision. So we've received those and we have meetings for both of those. One is on the 19th for the CRNA, and then the other is on the 20th for the nurse practitioners. Um, in addition to that, and going back to the A&Ms, we are looking at their job specifications and um, we've sent that out to have some uh, A&Ms kind of take a look at that um, to make sure that everything looks good in that regard. And then that's the final step for, for that in terms of the, the A&Ms. Um, in addition to that, we were also able during that meeting to get retro payment for the psych nurses who are now moving into the clinical nurse classification series, as well as the A&Ms who um, we'll be receiving the 10%. And the retro will be till November 14th. Yeah, and the retro will be back to when the clinical nurses uh, receive that 10%. And I think that's really unprecedented, right, Shannon? Yeah. In the history of RMPA, we've never been able to achieve retro pay. Um, and this is, keep in mind, guys, outside of contract negotiations, this is not something that um, they have to do. Um, of course, they have to honor that side letter agreement that we had from 2019, but Anything on top of that, anything additional that other classifications receive that weren't necessarily a part of that initial agreement, this is all something that's unprecedented and um, not required for them to do. So we're definitely pushing um, for everybody else. And I feel like between the psych nurses, the clinical nurses, we've accomplished a lot so far and now adding the A&Ms to that and really taking a, a thorough look at each of those classifications to see what the, the neighboring hospitals um, 
have so that we can kind of compare what we have and um, achieve some of the things that those, uh, those other hospitals have, including pay uh, programs, for example. Um, as you know, with the clinical nurse classification review, they found that um, other hospitals have a program in which they can receive a differential for doing additional things like committee work, research projects, you know, attending conferences, um, having advanced degrees, doing those sorts of things. So that was found as a part of the clinical nurse classification study. Um, and most other hospitals have that. It's actually their CLIN 3 and CLIN 4. It's a benefit of their CLIN 3 and CLIN 4. And that's what we were hoping to achieve is to get a clinical nurse for because we used to have one. Um, how many years ago, Shannon? When I first started, like so, they had it 30 years ago. Yeah, so they at some point removed that and they found that most of our clinical nurse threes are similar to clinical nurse fours at other hospitals. So anyways, long story as a result of that, this um, program in which is a 1,599 differential per month um, we'll be open to the clinical nurses. We are um, working on the details of that document and we are asking for that to be something that all the classifications can apply for. Naturally, it would look different for some classifications versus others, dependent on the minimum um, qualifications for their respective jobs. But um, we do think that that's a great thing and that other classifications should be open to it. So we're hoping that in the early part of the year, we're able to get that program going. Um, we're in the final versions of the document right now. And then we will open up to the membership to um, be able to have a small committee for people to look at that document um, and put additional feedback before it's final so that we can make sure that it's the best um, that we have for you guys. So um, that I think is the gist of the classification study stuff. Did I miss anything? People, Shannon? people are asking about nurse coordinators, staff yes. developers and infection control nurses. Well, tomorrow we have a meeting with Jeff Smith and um, other members of his team to look at those classifications and also to get clarification because they're not considering the clinical nurse specialist as an advanced practice nurse. And we're, we've provided documentation showing that they should have been included in the events practice uh, classification study because they are. So tomorrow we'll meet regarding, um, we'll talk about staff developers, infection control, and nurse coordinators per diem, and then also the advanced practice nurses. Yes. So we should know more information after tomorrow, um, what becomes of that of that meeting and then we'll definitely get that information out to you guys if there's any changes. Um, so, to so maybe we should request anybody that knows in any of those classifications if you know somebody that works at one of those hospitals and we can get like a job spec that shows what they do and their benefits and their compensation that would be helpful for us. I think a lot of it it's hard um, like even for the A&Ms for example um, they're not Particular, uh, particularly unionized within um, like the clinical nurses, for example, they're not like necessarily clustered like they are in ours. So sometimes it's hard to find that data. Um, so I think it takes them a little more time or different avenues to try to get the data. So we did have actually some A&Ms, um, you know, that work at other places also or have worked at other places provide those things. So we were able to get that to the county too. So certainly, yeah, like Shannon said, if you have any information on you know, staff development, nurse coordinator, infection control, you know, at other places, um, certainly send that to us, especially if it has salary information attached so that we can create our own grid. Um, although the county's doing their own um, research and, and stuff like that, we also are doing our own. Of course, we trust nothing. And so we're we're doing our own research and creating our own documentation to, to share that with them um, or to rebut anything that they have to say. So we, cer we certainly are doing our due diligence for each classification to make sure that we get the best possible outcome that we can for everybody. Um, so I hope that everybody understands that and can see that effort. So should we take questions about that before we move on? Yeah, I think that's a good idea. If anybody has any questions on this topic, if you want to raise your hand, Shannon will uh, call on you. Okay, no takers so far. <laughs> if you're unable to raise your hand, then go ahead and just speak. If for some reason you can't find it, um, that's okay too.
that just means then that my explanation was good and I'll take that. We'll say excellent. Then. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Hi, everybody. This is Jennifer Hughes. Um, I just wanted to, uh, Tiffany mentioned it, but I just wanted to re reiterate um, how great all the nurses did, you know, over the last month showing up and speaking at the Board of Supervisors, uh, especially the one last week. We had numerous nurses, um, you know, get on there and speak about, you know, the importance of, of you know, what they do and that they they deserve the 10%. And then also clinical nurses who already got the 10% spoke up for their and advocated for their colleagues. And uh, people were just really vulnerable and really honest. And I think, you know, the efforts that RMPA has been making combined with the nurses really speaking out and telling their stories, I think that really put extra pressure on the county. So just want to, you know, congratulate and just say we're so proud of everybody for the joined effort. And it was just another reminder that we're only as strong as our, you know, our members. So you are the union. So just, you know, this is a great example of moving into contract negotiations next year. You know, we need everyone to be on board and to help with the with the c different committees and um, showing up to the rallies, trying to recruit more area reps um, and things like that. Because, you know, we've already been told by Jeff Smith that next year it's going to be hard to get a good contract as far as money they're only really going to look at working conditions and that's not acceptable so we really need everyone on board um just like everyone was with this so um that's all and also I'll, I'll also say that some of our members are already sending us contracts like good sam just settled and we just got that contract we're waiting for the whole entire kaiser contract right we have parts of it but not the whole thing yeah so if anybody has the new kaiser information please send it to us because we're already starting to compile all that data hello folks this is alex for search can you hear me hello Hello, I'm going to a dead spot over here, so bear with me. Um, I just want to say to what Jennifer said about, you know, being together. That's, that's what we need to advocate to all of these nurses. Uh, it was amazing the way we, everybody got together towards, uh, you know, Jeff Smith and how everybody spoke. That's the way we need to start prepping all these nurses for when, the, when we start working for the next contract, you see? So we definitely need, because it, it was amazing, you see? That, that fact that the 10% was given to the a and is because everybody came together. And that's the way it's gonna have to be for the next contract negotiations that are coming up. Uh, so we need to advocate to get together, to speak, you see? Um, just, just to be present, basically. Uh, because it, well, it's pretty amazing how these a and they got that 10%. And it's because they, they heard the people roar, basically. And like what Jennifer was saying, is unity. That's all I wanted to say on that, because I'm, I'm pretty proud of our union. Thank you, Alex. We, we really appreciate that. And members like you who can recognize the importance of staying together and not you know, allowing the county to divide us, especially during this time when um, it seems like it's intentional, honestly, on their part. And um, it's really important for us to stick together if we're really going to get any uh, movement and and with our contract, but in general with everything they see that you know we're the biggest portion of, of um, labor workers at the hospital and we can shut it down very quickly. And so it, it really is important for us to stick together on that. So thank you for that and your your feedback and your kind words. We don't get that very often, honestly. We've been getting a lot of negative things and and hate mail and things like that that's really counterproductive to what we're doing here and um, it's a difficult place to be to do this job and I just ask that the staff you know and the, the nurses direct their frustrations to the appropriate location because it's not here so um, yeah. hi this is Fani from um, I'm a staff developer at VMC I have a question um, so I agree that, um, you know, it was very powerful, uh, all the statements at the Board of Supervisors uh, meeting. And um, I do believe that that's probably what convinced them to give the a and 10%, right? But my question is, was there a study completed for the a and or was it based on the st testimonials that um, that county agreed to give them the 10%? 
So the only thing we've received so far from the ANMs is their job specifications that they have reviewed for that. We have yet to see a salary review. I think mm -hmm. the, besides the testimonials and all the pressure that we put, we mainly brought up um, issues of compaction because typically the ANMs are a certain percentage away from the people that they supervise, right? So um, that I think, but with the testimonials and our um, arguments over compaction were the primary reasons that they were able to achieve that 10% because we have yet to see a salary comparison from neighboring hospitals um, uh, showing that data that it was warranted based on the neighboring hospital. So, yeah. Right, right. So, so I think from my perspective, you know, I'm really glad that the a received it and they totally deserve it. But from our perspective of as a staff developer that you know, there was, we're saying that a study needs to be done, but when, on the other hand, when a study is, uh, is not, has not been completed, still some classifications receive the raise. So, you know, right? I mean, isn't that like kind of, you know, contradicting each other? Yeah, so just so you know, so, um, okay, so really why Jeff Smith and came, to, came and talked to us last Thursday was based on what he said at the Board of Supervisors meeting, right? There's a lot of incorrect information. So what he asked us to do at our meeting on Thursday is send him information about how, when we negotiated that site agreement, how we cluster our different classifications. So what we explained to him is we were looking at advanced practice nurses. We are looking at psychiatric nurses, and then we are looking at clinical nurses. But under clinical nurses, we have assistant nurse managers, staff developers, infection control nurses, nurse coordinators. So we just send him that information, and that's what we'll be meeting about with him tomorrow. So we haven't let this go. We're still working on it, and that's our next step is we're addressing it tomorrow at our meeting. So hopefully we'll have something for all of our other classifications tomorrow. I can't guarantee that, but that's what our goal is. Okay. So Shannon is saying that the staff developers, nurse coordinators, a and infection control, all those classifications are under the, the branches of uh, when we negotiate for the clinical nurses. So because they are clinical in some aspects and have promoted into those positions, that's how we in our minds see them. And that's how we've always negotiated um, on the behalf of the clinical nurses, which encompasses all those other classifications. So like Shannon said, we're continuing to talk about those things and push those things and we'll continue to do that. Um, and, you know, I was actually surprised that day and having that call with Jeff because he was very, um, he didn't know what he was talking about at the Board of Supervisor meeting. He has not been involved with us during these meet and confer process. He was very confused and um, saying whatever he was saying, but his tone was a really a lot different at that last meeting on Thursday. And I was actually surprised at the progress that we made at that meeting and I wasn't expecting that. So I think that um, they're really looking to resolve this. They're really looking to, he's getting a lot of pressure, I think, from the Board of Supervisors. And so I think because of all that and you guys speaking and your letters and everything is really creating that pressure that's making them look at everything and all the compaction problems, all the issues, and they think they just want to fix it. So we are you know, doing our best to to push for, we've always wanted 10% for everybody, regardless, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna to continue to push for that. Will we receive it? We don't know, but we're doing our best to make sure that everybody, that we advocate for that and we do our best to make sure that everybody um, gets that. And yeah, that's how, oh, go ahead, sorry. I'd just like to add, this is Jennifer, um, VP. Please trust us, everybody. Like Tiffany said, we are working so hard. We are also working behind the scenes. I mean, in addition to the scheduled meetings with labor relations, HR, Jeff Smith, um, you know, we have developed relationships with the board of supervisors, and you know, you we've endorsed them. We we we've been very strategic, and we have. Uh, very good relationships. So we're doing all that we can behind the scenes and they are very supportive of us. So we just need to be patient. This can't happen overnight. We work for a county system. Then there's, there's, a, there's a process. <laughs> so we just, I know everyone yeah. wants it and deserves it. Yeah. And um, it's yeah. a little bit of time. I mean, my, I, myself, I'm a psychiatric nurse, so I didn't get the raise when, you know, my coworker, Alan, who was working in the ED got and the other clinical nurses got 
because even now we haven't, we've been at the county the same amount of time. But, you know, we just keep being very diligent and strategic and all of us working together where we're very hopeful that we'll get the 10% raise across the board. Okay. Yeah, no, I completely agree that, you know, all these things don't happen magically, right? There's a lot of work, a lot of team effort, a lot of, you know, negotiations and, um, uh, you know, sleepless nights, I'm sure for some of you, right, that happen in the background. So thank you for all your work. We just want don't want the ones that have not received to be forgotten or go by the wayside. No, no one, no one's forgotten or ever going to go by the wayside with us. We can guarantee that you guys may not see everything in our emails. You may not see everything that we do, but there's a lot that goes on. Um, a lot of things that you don't know until you're sitting in this room, until you're on this board. And so just please trust us and understand that we're doing the best that we can for each and every one of you. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, I don't see any more hands. Does anybody else have anything to say on this topic before we move on? I would like to say thank you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, us and a and m now we are happy and we are hoping and we know you're going to work so hard for the rest of the team that who does not get the 10 percent raise thank, thank you. you thank you okay the next topic um was upcoming contract negotiations so um our negotiator um Susie York has been working the last several months uh, internally, kind of organizing uh, documents, looking at contracts, planning things out. Um, so coming up in um, early part of the year, we, like Jennifer said earlier, are going to be looking for people to join committees to be able to help out and provide feedback on certain sections of the contract, if, you know, suggestions, you know, this is your contract. And so we really want the feedback of everybody to be able to improve it in any way that we can. We certainly have a list of a lot of things that um, some of which we didn't get in the last contract negotiations, um, but some newer things that have developed over the last several years that we know are issues in terms of language or different things in there. Um, so there's going to be a lot of that that goes on, but we definitely need your participation, especially like Alex said earlier, you know, to be able to um, achieve the things that we want in the contract. We were very successful at the last contract just by having that strike vote. Um, we were able to get 11% that first year, which is, you know, a pretty significant amount in, in a one year time frame like that, right? So um, it's not just pay, um, it's other things that impact our working conditions, things like differentials, you know, tuition leave reimbursement and that sort of thing that are important that we want everybody to kind of you know, look through your contract. If there's things that have came up for you that, you know, you feel would uh, be beneficial, please join one of our committees. Um, when we send out somewhere else, else, right? You yeah. work somewhere else and there's something that they have that you think would help uh, over here, that would be great too. Yeah, there's a lot of great things, you know, at other hospitals that they have that we can certainly ask for here. Um, and it's helpful when it's at other hospitals too, because in the last contract, they're like, you know, we'd ask for outlandish things that they thought was outlandish, but we're like, oh, well, this hospital has it, you know, so like preceptor pay, we're probably one of the last hospitals to get preceptor pay, but now that it's in the contract, we can increase that differential over time and stuff like that. But yeah, so if you have anything, definitely reach out to us and then consider joining one of our committees, um, especially if you're, you know, an A&M. Uh, nurse coordinator, staff developer, CRNA, people that are in those specific classifications that um, we don't necessarily know as much about, right? Because we are, we tend, most of us are clinical nurses here, except for uh, Maria, nurse practitioner. But um, I believe we have Malay coming on. She's a nurse coordinator, so mm -hmm. that's helpful. But and O'Connor too. Yeah, and O'Connor Hospital. And that's too. another thing is that we have representation everywhere, right? So if yeah. we have, you know, VMC, we need O'Connor, St. Louis, custody, all the clinics. So we, we need lots of representation. Yeah. So consider it. It's not going to require a lot of your time, but certainly will, you know, be a reward in the long run in the event we're able to be successful in everything that we're asking for. So um, is there anything else? Jen, you have anything to add for that or Shannon? I have something I want to say too. The other thing is improvement, right? So if there's something in the contract that you see that doesn't work well, also let us know that too, because we only know about issues when they come to us. So if you there's something that doesn't come to us, but you think you can make it better, that's another thing that's important. 
Yeah, and I think often the county con like interprets our language differently than we do. And so I think some of it's going to be cleaning up that language to make it more clear on what the understanding of that language is so that um, we're all kind of on the same page so that the county's interpreting it this way. So is the manager. So are we, you know, because it's sometimes there's a lot of gray areas and um, we really want to address some of that stuff too. Any questions? Because I'm going through the list. I don't see any hands up. So we'll be starting in the earlier part of the year and um, just watch for those emails. And then our contract expires at the end of October um, 2023. And so we should be starting our negotiation officially um, that summer, early in the summer. Um, I think SEIU is up in June, so hopefully they start their process early so that we can kind of come behind them. Last time we were out at the same time, which actually was to the benefit of both of us, I think, that we were out of contract at the same time so that we could, <laughs> so we can do some action. Work together. <laughs> yeah, but um, so let's see how that goes. But just watch for those things if you're interested or you know somebody that is interested uh, to let us know, okay? Um, since no questions, we'll move on to the next topic was regarding short staffing at VMC um, and the pediatric and the PICU primarily due to the RSV surge. So um, we were able to achieve the incentive program, which is probably the longest time that we've had an incentive, incentive program extended for. So January 22nd is when it ends. Um, they're looking for people who have experience in pediatrics primarily within the last year that are able to pick up days there to help. Um, mainly it's a staffing problem over there. Um, so if, if you are interested or you know, you're know you able to pick up additional days, I think they're really having a challenge with that. Even getting travelers, they have yeah. tried for or that. Even if you want to take this as an opportunity to train, you can reach out to the manager. They're looking for anybody just to really come. And if you wanna train, they're looking at those opportunities too. Yeah. So I think that's really been a challenge with this RSV uh, situation and space. Space is also a challenge always as well too. And, you know, BMC, we're really the only pediatric focused unit there. Um, O'Connor doesn't have pediatrics anymore. And then St. Louis has a, a med surge ped. So it's a, it's a combo unit, but they don't tend to take like the higher acute pediatric patients there. And they have very few. Uh, normally they get transferred over to BMC. So um, they're looking for some assistance there. If you need additional information, you can reach out for us um, to us and we'll give you more information on that. Um, but that's the latest there with the RSV situation. Um, any questions on that, concerns or otherwise? No? Okay, Jen, uh, last topic is uh, workplace violence prevention campaign. That's all you. Yep. Okay, so we had our first uh, violence prevention, uh, workplace violence prevention committee meeting. Uh, I think it was last month, and we we're planning on having the next one next week, next Wednesday, the 21st from 1 to 2. So we're still looking for people that are interested and are passionate about violence prevention. It's not a huge, a huge commitment. It's um, join, it's attending these uh, monthly meetings and they're just an hour long and we just go over ideas and then we have, we're gonna go into break uh, work groups, but you know, with the ultimate goal to make it a felony to assault a healthcare worker, but just in the meantime, starting small. So we we talked about um, going around and recruiting other members and we're going to be uh, working together with SCIU and also Stanford nurses, the Corona nurses, because they're, they've expressed interest as well. And um, also the El Camino uh, nurses union and then going to starting out with local politicians who will help support us and then going to Sacramento. So that it, the wheels are in motion. So, um, you know, unfortunately violence is on the rise and it's happening all over our hospital system and clinics. And, you know, you are all out there, your front lines. And so you're experiencing it and we could really, you know, use your help. So if you're not in the group and you have interest in it, you can email me. It's jhughes, H-U-G-H-E-S at rnpa.net. Or you can just email info and just say you're interested in being in the work group. 
Um, we have pretty cool t-shirts and I just think it's a really exciting opportunity to be a part of something that will hopefully help the profession, help future nurses in California and healthcare workers stay safe. Also, we continue to advocate monthly, uh, more than monthly, actually in every meeting that, that we can, uh, advocating for your safety. So we're continuing to really push to get the PSOs out at St. Louis Hospital in, and in addition to a sheriff deputy, because I guess sometimes there's issues out there where the Gilroy PD or Morgan Hill PD say, you know, it's not our jurisdiction, we're hands off. So there's there's kind of a dispute right now with the um, with the PSOs. So that's why they're still unfortunately contracted security. But we're really pushing for at least a third security guard out at St. Louis, and then one in the ED at all times. Uh, also continue to push for the metal detectors in all three hospitals and clinics. So um, just know that we're really also advocating behind the scenes always. And if any of you have any comments or questions with that, please email us. And um, yeah, I think, I think that's all for now about, about workplace violence. I think in addition to that, Jen, we can mention that there has been some movement, I think at um, O'Connor and St. Louis, they're both doing, or they both have done or are doing um, like sec security surveillance uh, around the perimeter and stuff and checking lighting at different times of the day, um, you know, corridors, different things that pose, you know, more risks, I guess. So they're, they have done that um, as well. So it seems like they're working on certain things with our, you know, advocacy. It's just taking a little time for them to get there. So we're hopeful yeah. that there'll be more progress in the coming months um, with yeah. that. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, please continue to fill out occurrence reports if you or any of your coworkers get assaulted on your shift, because, you know, they look at those and if they're not charted some, you know, as we know, it didn't happen. Um, and, you know, the hope that is if it's a pretty serious assault, then the person who assaulted will be taken to jail. And unfortunately, sometimes the sheriff deputies argue with you. And really, if there's a big issue like that, please call us because yeah. we call the captain directly. Um, you know, the, the, they're, they're just humans too. And sometimes they take shortcuts, but really they need to do their job and protect us. So um, keep that in mind. So aside from the violence prevention thing, I don't want us to forget that, you know, we just had our board of directors elections and there's uh, several people that um, were elected and, you know, thank you to everybody who participated in voting and selecting your um, board of directors that are going to be representing you. Um, so Jennifer was reelected um, as one of the vice presidents. Um, Joan uh, works in BAP. She was elected as the treasurer, although she ran unopposed as well, but she was elected. Annie Ann, um, she works in the ED over at BMC and she's the new area representative chairperson. Um, we're so happy to have also Ryan um, Lorendo who works in for medical at BMC. He'll be our publications chairperson uh, and master of our social media, hopefully. <laughs> and Malay Toy, um, we're excited to have her. I don't think we've had a nurse coordinator um, yeah, so excited to have Malay Toy, who's a nurse coordinator over at O'Connor Hospital. We definitely need some representation there as well. So she'll be working with Susie um, doing the negotiation stuff. We did receive several write-ins for the uh, continuing education chair position. Um, so what we're gonna do as a board is look at those individuals and um, reach out to them directly. And we'd like to sit down with them and kind of do uh, more of a, you know, informal interview with them to see who we think would be the best. And at that point, then um, Alan Kamara as president can appoint one of those people to fulfill that role. So um, we're excited for this, this new group and joining the current board and um, good things to come. We definitely, there's a lot of work in 2023 with this contract, but, you know, we're confident that we have a, a solid group that's going to be able to um, work with us to be able to accomplish the things that we need to. So, is there something? Oh, no, I was looking at that. Okay. Does anybody have any uh, questions, comments, or concerns related or unrelated to any of the topics that we talked about today? Somebody hit us. It's open up to 
Um, when is the union holiday party? <laughs> Hello, this is Alex. Can you guys hear me? Yeah. How about you throw us a party? Guys. <laughs> throw us a party. Oh. We've been having so much work. Oh, sure. A little bit of that doesn't hurt. Uh, we're so, doing an individual holiday party for our staff. Um, wow. But in Alan, actually, we did talk about doing a, um, a, a RNPA event of sorts um, at one point, but that's not something that we've officially planned yet. So what do you what do you got for us, Alex? No, just going back to the violence prevention. Thank you very uh -huh. much for working with this and making it such a statewide and bringing all these hospitals I'm going to Sacramento. But, but I mean, for a hospital, guys, I mean, we need to move fast with this. I mean, we need metal detectors with the type of demographic that we take care of. The other day, we were not even sure if there was a, we, we had like this horrible patient there that had this special box. And those boxes, those are the ones that you use to carry a plug or to kind of a, put a, a gun in there. Like so, so, you know, something? yeah, that's what uh, they had in there. And you know, I, I definitely we need those. I, I know it's not Highland in Oakland, you see, but we need metal detectors in all of these hospitals. Yeah. The population, demographic has changed, a lot of narcotics. Um, yeah, so definitely, definitely, I, I think that's something that even if it doesn't work over there in Sacramento, we need to push it with this management over here, how we can get to get some metal detectors, you know, and, and especially at the ED. Yeah, uh, in, in the it, least it, the wands, Alex, you know, Jen, the wands, correct. Yeah, Jen had, correct. you know, found that Kaiser has the wands, you know, so in the least that, you know, it just takes a, a person that's already there to kind of do that, but. Um, it might deter, it might deter somebody. It may deter oh, okay. some people, exactly. So in the least they can do that. I think logistically, they had mentioned they were looking at the metal detectors. They had some that they were going to take out of storage, and then they found that those were what unusable and old and then somebody picked them up like as like junk or whatever but um aside from that they were trying to figure out the logistics of where to put because space is a challenge not only at st louis but vmc and and the process in which if they did find something what do they do and how does that look like so um we agree that that's i mean when it comes to safety things need to be more swiftly done and we can't be waiting around for somebody to get hurt in order to make the change right and so i think that's why like jen said every single meeting we're always talking about it um so what are, what are they waiting for a disaster something horrible to happen i mean that's county. that's what it's a county exactly. this is what they yeah this is what they do alex don't you know <laughs> they're evaluating it like uh um, they have a jen what does uh dr hawashi do or curtis yeah. Dr. Curtis Hirashi, um, he he's evaluating it. He's they're testing those alarms in each unit. Like a nurse, each nurse will carry a card and can activate alarm. But then they're looking at, like, well, who's the response team? You know. Um, so you know, I just thought, you know, we talk about it at every meeting with them. We even had our board of supervisors tour the hospital. We we pointed out to Susan Ellenberg and to Otto Lee when they were at both hospitals, especially in the ED, look, there's no metal detectors, you know, would you feel safe working here or having your family member come here? So we've done that. We're gonna, we have a tour scheduled with Jeff Smith out at St. Louis because I guess they, the county told us that it's an operational issue over there. There's not enough room. It's such a small emergency room for the metal detector. So we keep saying, get, get the wand. But you know, this is making me think, I think we need all of you to speak up at the board of supervisors meeting, right, right. you know, and it, working firsthand because personal stories really speak volumes and then it puts it out in, out in public, you know, say some stories, the experience at work. Also let us know. So email us with, you know, special cases. Of course, remember HIPAA, don't use patient names or anything, but we need these specific um, real-time stories that are happening with violence uh, to, to well, bring. I, I, got a, I got assaulted like two months, almost two months ago. Good thing that guy didn't have a metal thing, because if he was sticking in my neck, that would have been in or it for me right there. Yeah. And then, so I got assaulted, you see, and it's not the first time. I'm going to work as I'm talking to you. I don't know what's going to happen. I know there's no metal detectors, and these lovely visitors could bring something terrible. Yeah. So, so until something terrible happens, they're going to get their case study. I hope, uh, oh my God, I don't want nobody to get hurt. Let's just say the people get hurt. 
the studies. I think we need the the ones to start with. Yeah. Okay. You know what? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Even Gilroy Gardens have metal detectors to go in, which I'm so grateful to them for that. Okay. Right. Right. So does Mount Winery concerts. You know. You know that's so we're gonna January we're gonna organize and we're gonna have nurses come and speak at the board of supervisors because yeah and I'm so sorry you got assaulted. You know it's happening more and more unacceptable and especially if it can, some of it can be preventable. Jen, maybe you can recruit people for your committee and your committee can plan this action. Yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. talk about, we're gonna definitely talk about it next Wednesday and, and we will um, organize this for, for January. At least when I retire, this hospital stays with metal detectors, that would be beautiful because yeah. that, that could prevent so many, so many bad things. You guys see what happened ac across this country you guys see what's going on and my god if something like that happens to us then they're going to start rushing to put metal detectors but it's going to be too late there's going to be a kid without a mom yeah a husband without a wife too late but thank you guys you guys do a great job that's i'm very proud of you thank you alex thank you okay so we'll see if anybody else has any questions um, in terms of disarming, I saw, I don't know what the policy is. I don't feel like we should disarm as nurses. That should be up to like the PSO or sheriff to disarm or take weapons away from people. Um, I think it's dangerous for us to put it. That's not our role, honestly. And um, was that a question in the chat? Yeah. It says somebody's asking the scope to disarm patients is what we're talking about, right? Yeah. So, and it says ED on there, right? Yeah. So if i don't know if you're vmc ed or what ed that you are you know alan maybe can give a little more um information on that or feedback to that but i feel um no one as a nurse should be disarming or taking anything away from somebody i know we check belongings sometimes our policy is especially if there are suicidal patients to go through their belongings and that sort of thing and that's different but if somebody actively has a weapon i don't know if that's the case and we're trying to we should not be trying to disarm them at that time it needs to go to the the pso and or sheriff to be taking care of that i just don't know how the practice typically works down there in the ed and that sort of thing so it'd be helpful i think to know more information on that but i don't think Tiffany, it's, yeah can i can i make a comment i'm sorry i feel like i talk too much but can i make a comment on that too the Go PSO ahead. stiff, yeah. they don't even want to touch nobody, okay? They don't want to touch nobody. They, they roughed up these poor nurses, okay, guys? Like, you need to touch the patient first. I mean, what? It, okay, the patient had 5150. Or they go after anything, anything. So they, have, they can just sort of walk away and leave us in a pickle right there. And it happens, all, and they come in with all that attitude that we're tough people towards the poor nurses. That one day they, they're going to be taken care of by a nurse. Yeah, I mean, we tend. If I was a PSO, I would be running, running. Jen, isn't that part of the new PSO though that they're going to be trained on how to de-escalate cool and stuff? Yeah, so that that's a tough one. It's a long-standing issue with. Uh, the hospital staff and PSOs. I deal with it and working in BAP all the time. Um, I, it's, you know, there's their direct report is the sheriff deputy or captain, and they have some, you know, disagreements with them. So they're not always following protocols. So you get these like rookie cowboys. So they're there to protect us and protect patients. Sometimes I think in the past they have been pushed up to the front saying, here, deal with this patient. And then, you know, maybe they're going beyond their scope and some a patient got injured. So there is some validity to their stuff, but really they're supposed to help you. Like in BAP, they're, all the PSOs are trained yearly in the green team process, which is de-escalation and takedowns. And so if they're told, like, you know, if we have to it takes four people to take someone down, weight equal distribution. You, you can tell them, I need you to grab the right arm. And if that's not happening, you know, let your supervisor, let your manager know. You guys don't feel safe. I mean, again, email us. And, you know, we have relationships with the, the sheriff deputies. But it's a fine line because we need them to get our back, too. You know, so it's a lot of but it. At is the same time, Jen, they give us a terrible attitude. 
I mean, they give us, the, they give these nurses a terrible attitude. They, when they go there, almost the situation is almost fixed, but they don't want to jump right in. If I was a PSO, I would, trust me, I would, I had jumped many times, okay? And that's why I'm the one that gets assaulted. They don't want, I, I think it's because of the bad experiences that they had a bad, but we don't even, we don't even know how to deal with these psych patients as the nurses are bad. You see what I'm saying? We're, we're not trained like you guys to yeah. deal with the psych as, as much, you see? Uh, yeah. We have some, some, because we're all nurses, we know how to deal with, with psych patients, but not at the level that the bad nurses can do. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, my, oh my goodness, and they go there, walking with the song of the Pink Panther, very slowly, let me see if this is done, or I need to, do I have a 51, anything, anything, so they don't have to put their hands on. Sometimes we just require them to tell them, please, get back in bed. You see, oh, don't do this to them. But even that, they come with a huge attitude, some of them. I know they need to look tough, but don't be that way to the people who are going to take care of you one day. Yeah. I mean, some, a lot of it is communication too with us. So, you know, they stoop high or we go, or they go low, we go high. So you, you're so yeah. respectful to them, but you also are firm and assertive saying, I need you to come with me and like walk with me and talk to this patient because study shows that with uh, some violent patients and a lot of psych patients, if they have a, p a person of authority there, yes. they and more so just having that officer there with with the you know pso outfit but like shannon was saying the whole pso is going to be reclassified soon it's, it's been in the works for a long time and there's going to be more opportunity for them to promote and they're all going to have to go through you know certain training and it's going they're going to be more on the same page so we're very hopeful that this will help all of us be safer and be on the same page you know i think there's maybe some bad apples that have been there and have have spewed some negativity into the newer ones um, but you know, we're, we're hoping for, for, for positive change. And like I said, you need to escalate this to your manager. And if nothing's being done, let us know, you know, we will escalate it to, because to the uh, people higher up, but also I know you guys aren't trained like we, we are in BAP, but there is a mm -hmm. lot more training now for all hospital and clinic staff on de-escalation. And I hope your managers are allowing you to take those, um, violence prevention classes and there's an in-person one now with Jackie and another trainer. Um, I'm also really encouraging management and you guys can too as well, have huddles, you know, at shift change. If you're not, besides just the SBAR, a quick five minute huddle on, you know, violent patients, what, what works well, what doesn't, things like that. Um, everyone needs to be really proactive because it's true. They're just m more and more violent patients sprinkled all through hospitals and clinics, clinics now, and it's probably not gonna change. It's all over road rage. Oh, yeah. Jen just had a road rage incident. So, you know, people like all over are just heightened, you know, cost of living is increased, you know, everything is up and people are stressed and it really like we notice a change since COVID too. So it's not just in the hospital setting, it's everywhere and really how to do the best for ourselves to be able to handle those type of people. Um, yeah, because it's it's definitely everywhere. Um, that's all we have um, in terms of agenda items. If there's additional questions or concerns, we'll open it up. You guys have, if there's something that you need clarification on, on things that we spoke about earlier, um, now's a good time to ask and get those things out um, so that we can make sure that we're all on the same page, okay? So feel free to speak up, raise your hand, whatever you want to do. Um, if you have any additional things so that we can make sure that you're all taken care of and we're on the same page here. <clears throat> I just wanted to say one more thing since no one's saying anything. This is Jen. Um, just, you know, thank you all for everything that you do. Your job is so important and we know this is a really hard time of year. Please make sure to practice good self-care, take care of your own mental health right now. This is a really hard time of year for everybody. You know, if you're struggling, reach out to a friend, um, you know, reach out to your, there's, you know, therapy services available and there's nothing wrong with that. EAP, I think, offers us eight free sessions a year now as county employees. And it's very easy. You just call them. You can have a phone appointment, Zoom or in person, and they're right on the Alameda. Um, but just please practice good self-care this time of year. Yes. Thank you. 
Anything we missed, guys, or any um, additional questions or something that comes up after the meeting, uh, you know, always feel to feel free to email us or reach out, um, and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Okay, so we're we're always here and we're working hard for you. Guys, one more question before you go. Go ahead, In Alex. the case with the CMR room settled down, did we went to court already? Because I have witnesses if you guys need. Yeah, well, we're, we're definitely getting to that point, I feel like, because we've gone back and forth several times with the county. Um, we're still in litigation um, and trying to figure out a middle ground on this. Um, they want to continue the practice and they want to do what they want to do. And um, really, it's up to us to kind of help dictate how that would look if that's really what they want to do. Um, so we're, we're still in the processes with that and um, there's no new updates at this time. We sent them the latest proposal um, of which we would like to see. They didn't agree to it. So, uh, you know, we're just going to continue to move forward with the attorney and gotcha. um, do the best that we can. But there's not a lot of changes um, there. It takes a long time to go back and forth with this stuff, but we're actively working on it. Yesterday, if you guys need witnesses for court. There's we, nurses yeah, that there more than yeah, willing to may, go, so let me know. Yeah, we definitely may need that once we, um, if we're unable to agree through this process, what we're doing now, then um, when it goes to the officially in front of the judge, then yes, we would definitely need witnesses and people to speak. So we'll keep you in mind and um, yeah. when we get to that point. And yesterday I got a, a call from uh, somebody and they were saying that people were being scheduled there. They weren't being trained. They weren't getting breaks. So we need to get all that information too, if that's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if people all want that, to all ask, go ahead. All right. they, they're causing shortage all around the hospital. They didn't let us, they already out of the other two hospitals without letting us know. And they also, they're causing all these grievance all around for the nurses. Yeah. Shame on them. Yeah. I mean, patient care is important. We understand the monitors need to be watched, but I feel like they've had plenty of time to um, train people, get get people. Like, what's what's the problem, right? I don't feel like they've really done their due diligence. They're just relying on the fact that the nurses are the biggest labor force and you can kind of pull us to do whatever, right? Like during the COVID, we were the janitors, we're the lab techs, we're the docs, yeah, we're, you know, we're the iPad holder. You know, we're we're plunging Correct. the toilets, <laughs> right? Don't so let, like, don't, yeah. Don't let so, them forget the pandemic. Don't yeah. let these people forget the pandemic ever. Yeah. So they, I think that that's what it is too. But they've had plenty of time, and yes, they did put St. Louis over there too, and that hasn't even added the Avisher because they're not even St. Louis and O'Connor under the Avisher contract for the sitter patients yet. You know, so. It's gonna it's gonna get worse, um, but they I don't feel have been proactive enough in hiring people or asking for cross training in terms of uh, like maybe HSAs that are willing to do that or something like that. But um, we're definitely still pushing and working on that. And weren't you guys looking at people that um, are on accommodations too? Yeah, that was one of our suggestions. We have tons of nurses that are unable to work at the bedside because of an injury or something right. else. Like maybe they would be able to be accommodated there. Why not? you know, put those people there, you know, and then at the end of the day, you know, if give you're them a chance. Able, yeah, give them a chance. And at Stay. the end of the day, if they or the techs are not available, then figure out a process and how you're going to get other people by way of volunteers or that sort of thing. But um, they're just going about it all in the wrong way. And it's leaving a, a really bad taste in the, the mouths of all the nurses and it's affecting patient care, you know, and, and right. the floors. So um, yeah, we'll continue. We'll continue with that and keep you guys updated once we have more information on that one. Thank you. Okay, we'll see if anybody has their hand up. Um, that's a no. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, happy holidays to everybody. Um, happy New Year. Um, like Jen said, practice your self care and take good care of yourselves. You come first before anybody else, right? So. Um, if you need to call in sick, you need to do what you need to do and take your vacation, your PTO and all that stuff and you. put yourself first. You know, that's the main priority. And um, we're here if you need us and we'll keep you updated as um, much as possible as soon as we can. And once we have updated information on all the topics we discussed today or anything that comes out um, in addition to these topics. OK, take good care and we'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.